Hey everybody. Uh, hey Mike, how are you What's doing, up? bud? I'm doing great. How are you? You look like you've had a little bit to eat today. Thanks. That's a starting off with a fat joke. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a uh, it's Thanksgiving right now, and I got a level with you. I I took some chances last week, and that didn't really pay off. Mm. And I I learned my lesson. So this week, um, I'm going to play it safe. Are you? Fuck no! Hey everybody, welcome to the DynastyProsFootball.com weekend warm-up. I'm your host, Brendan Booth, at BigBonedFFB is where you can find me on Twitter. With me as every week is the other host, Mike Lindbergh, at FFCanuck99. Go ahead and pour yourself an adult beverage, preferably in a monogrammed glass. Tonight, we're drinking Boule Rye. It's Francais Bourbon. (laughs) Bullet Rye, baby. All right. It is Thanksgiving night. It's it is. around 7.30. I got up at 9.30 this morning, put the Lions-Packers game on my phone, and proceeded to the kitchen. I made some coffee and cooked until 5.30 tonight. I was on my feet for eight hours making sous vide turkey three ways. Uh, I made mac and cheese with rigatoni so it can hold all of that luscious cheese Mm. sauce. I made stuffing. I made mashed potatoes. I made maple glazed carrots. I made uh, all all kinds. I did. I made everything but the pies. We got a Costco pecan pie, and my girlfriend made a a pumpkin pie. And uh, I've eaten dinner. I haven't had my pie yet, so... We're going to keep this short so I can get downstairs and, and get me some some pecan pie. Pecan Costco pie. Let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. So, so you, How you was your day? Well, I Absolutely. worked all day. Uh, I worked all day. It's a bit it's a bit different of a holiday up here in Canada. Like, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving in November. We do it in, you know, October when our leaves fall. So, a bit different here. But you know what? I was uh, online quite a bit today and uh, taking it in and seeing a lot of really cool stuff on online about food. And, um, you know, it was uh, a lot of fun to see what was happening up uh, down south from me. So Yeah. And three football games on a Thursday, which is pretty weird. Pretty cool. The only thing is it took away from some of our from our starts and sits pool. Yeah, well, we're going to cut her a little bit short because of that. And you know what? Everybody wants to, you know, veg out after a long day of eating and stuff like that and some Black Friday sales. So we're going to cut it a little bit short today. Yeah. Well, before we get to the news and the injuries, I want to remind everybody to like the video, comment down below. We'll match comments. I mean, we'll comment back. That's what I do. And I tend to go in and do updates uh, on Sunday mornings with some of the injury news and stuff like that. So look for that. Um, also share the video around and, uh, and hit the bell. So you get a notification when this drops on Saturday. Um, and with that, here's Mike Lindbergh with the news. You bet. You bet. Okay. So it's a pretty special week for you and I, I guess, uh, Raider nation going to take another big L this week at the hands of my chiefs. I can't wait to see that one go down on Sunday. A uh, little bell. Matchup. <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll be a lot tighter than than a big L, but it, it, I, I'm hoping to see my cheese bounce back after a tough one on Monday night. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're going into Vegas, uh, hostile crowd. Uh, you know the Raiders are four and one at home. Uh, their defense is playing lights out. So I, I honestly think it's going to be a very close game uh, with a you know a really upset Chiefs fan base and Chiefs team you know, going in there and taking a hard fought win, you know, low scoring game. Yeah. We haven't beat the chiefs in years. Don't worry about it. 
It was 2020 uh, October, I think it was, when they waltzed yeah. into Arrowhead and, and beat us. But it uh, doesn't happen often. So we have some unsettling news. Joe Burrow went down with his wrist injury season ending. So It won't is... stop. It just won't stop. I know. It's such such bad news for those pass catchers. Um, you know, obviously Chase is still like a, a top wide receiver, but you know, he's been downgraded. T Higgins still can't get on the practice field. I'm looking for him and Joe Mixon to get a big bump as this, uh, you know, Bengals team looks to regroup after that Burrow injury. Let's go Folsom native NorCal, Jake Browning. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how that plays out. You know, hopefully he can make a couple of those guys fantasy relevant for us. Maybe he can uh, find Trent Irwin. Ooh, yeah. They, Sleeper alert, sleeper alert. <laughs> Anyways, so we have Kyron Williams coming back from into action. For, he's playing the Cardinals this week. Some believe he'll be eased into action uh, and that'll become a committee. But, uh, you know, with them cutting Daryl Henderson loose, I'm not sure about that. It looks like uh, they are looking to really get him into action and plug him pretty hard as this game goes on. What do you think? You think he's going to, you know, ride or die in this one? I mean, the other option is Royce. So, yeah, let's go Ky Kyron all the way. Yeah, it uh, it it looks good for him, but I don't know. That that whole offense looks pretty banged up. You know, Puka hasn't practiced much. Cup has been, you know, he didn't practice yesterday. Today he he was limited. So they, they need something. So hopefully it's not a I'm in the game and then out of the game again because I get re-injured because that would be rough. Yeah, and you know, hey, Tutu Atwell, he's sitting there, he's waiting, he's waiting. Yeah, yeah, he he is a good sleeper. You know, when uh, when Cup was injured earlier in the season, there, he uh, he he was like a, a storyline, right? And he just faded out, and now he could be back, and people should have him on their radar. And uh, and some really exciting news for some of us: uh, Matt Canada got fired this week, which is. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people rejoiced in that one. And you never want to rejoice in someone getting fired. But, you know, as a fantasy Ooh. manager of uh, Deontay Who Johnson. Who are you talking to, Mike? <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, that's a big, big thing. I, uh, you know, as I thought that, you know, the Steelers are in the hunt and they're they're playing good football for the most part other than their offense. I, you know, I just thought that that would save Canada's job until the end of the year. But, Obviously, they're not thinking that way, and I think it's a good move forward. You know, they have to figure something out in that offense because it has been really bad lately. So, good news there. Uh, Inexplicably bad. Yeah. And some really bad news here. We have Luke Musgrave, who was admitted to hospital with a lacerated kidney, and he it has been placed. Yeah. Won't stop. It's been tough. It's been tough sledding and it just won't stop. Uh, actually, but you know what? We saw that game today and we saw a lot of those Packers pass catchers have really nice games. Jordan Love came back and bounced back with a nice game there today too. So not all hope is lost uh, with that Packer offense. I mean, with Aaron Jones not playing and Musgrave down, it was really nice to see some of those other guys step up and have some fantasy relevant roles, uh, notably Christian Watson. Yep. And I'm a heavy Jaden Reed investor. So that was, that's always good to see him. He's, he's starting to establish himself as, as a definitely a go-to guy in that, that offense. Yeah. That slot role was always a coveted role in that offense. And hopefully he can really secure that and uh, continue his emergence in the, in the latter half of this season. So, Zach Wilson getting benched. It's about time. I'm not sure they have a replacement that's going to be any better, but I, I think he'll be better for the receivers. You know, Garrett Wilson has been earning for somebody that can get him the ball uh, a bit quicker. Um, so hopefully that move forward will will help. Not sure exactly who they're going to start. They, there's a couple guys in the mix there. Uh, they, they brought in Trevor Simeon this week, um, but I, I, I doubt he starts week one. What are your thoughts? It's Boyle's, it's Boyle's, Boyle's job. Uh, yeah. And, and I, t I tweeted her earlier. Uh, if 2019 you told, or if you told 2019 you that uh, Tim Boyle was just dropped in our fishbowl league for 
Car- <laughs> Carson Wentz was just dropped in our fishbowl league for Tim Boyle. Um, your 2019, you would be very, very confused at the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, we have a couple other injuries that we have to kind of report. Um, we talked about Mark Andrews all week leading up to today, but another injury with major fantasy football implications. Uh, Mark Andrews sustained an ankle injury on Monday. And Harbaugh said that it may be season ending. It looks like it will be now. He went under surgery. And uh, I'm looking for OBJ to step up and soak up some of those vacant targets as well as a flowers. But you know what, Zay Flowers popped up on the injury report today randomly. He practiced yesterday, and now today he's not on there. So really, really intriguing situation there in Baltimore now when you see their number one pass catcher going down. Not to spoil anything, but we're going to talk about the Ravens in a little while. Uh, and yeah, OBJ was limited in practice today too. So Yeah, so, yeah we might see a little feet. bit of a... Yeah, maybe some Rashad Bateman action. But you know what? He's been injured as well. Like he's on the injury report as well with some sort of foot injury too. So there's a lot a lot of issues there. But hopefully one of them can emerge. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so Kenneth Walker didn't play tonight. Uh, Charbonnet was supposed to, you know, slide in and be, you know, a league winner in some people's opinion. But, you know, as – He's playing a stout 49er run defense, so it might be another week before that emergence could happen. But by then, you never know. Kenneth Walker might be back in the in action. Um, I did a player profiler podcast uh, two weeks ago, and yeah. we were talking about potential league winners, who we were targeting and things like that. And I was looking at Brian Robinson and uh, Jerome Ford and – one of the reasons was I was moving off of Kenneth Walker and ultimately Zach Charbonnet just, just because their upcoming schedule, their, their playoff schedule in fantasy playoffs is, is pretty brutal against run defenses. So um, I think they have Dallas coming up. They got to play Philly. They had the Niners this week. So those Seahawks guys, uh, as much as we waited for Charbonnet to, you know, kind of like get his shot, all of a yeah. sudden it comes boom in a, a really bad, bad time in matchup wise. Yeah. I, yeah, it, it sucks, but you know what? He had his opportunity at the beginning of the year too, and he couldn't get in the lineup as well. So that's, that's another situation, but uh, yeah, it's something worth monitoring. And uh, it's, it's a, it's tough to know that when you, when you do get into the game and you're getting these tough matchups, it's, it doesn't work out well, but uh, Cooper cup, Left Sunday's game with another ankle injury. He was then able to return. Uh, not sure what that means for him, but uh, and Puka Nakua also wasn't uh, very active in practice either. So a lot of variables. We talked about Tutu Outwell being a kind of a sleeper there. Uh, I think that uh, if Cup does play, he won't he won't be as effective. Uh, they'll they'll probably want to put Tutu into some of those situations and 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 give him the ball because he has fresh legs. And uh, the Rams need a win, too. Yeah, I bet Sean McVay is regretting get, letting go of Van Jefferson. Yeah. Um, Devon A. Chan, he looks like he might miss another game here. Like, he he, he went out in the earlier parts of last week's game, came back in, and then he went back out and uh, hasn't really practiced much to start the week here. Um, Savon Ahmed is now on IR. Jeff Wilson looks like he might be ready to suit up. Uh, pretty murky backfield when you think of how many running backs they had to start the year there, and they're still needing more. So yeah, and Mostert's banged up too. He's he's yeah. uh, got a questionable tag. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So we'll see what happens. How that shakes out. Um, you know that that small body running back out of the backfield you know there was always a question mark around him nothing about his his talent or anything like that but it was more about him being able to be durable we saw it in training camp uh we saw it in preseason and then we've seen it a couple times this season uh so something to monitor as a a lot of guys have him as like a top 10 dynasty asset and that 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 scares me a bit with his injury history so far to start his career talent wise that's it's correct but um you know being able to being available availability is an ability so uh, if he's not gonna if he's gonna deal with this for his career 
in the yeah. mold of Rashad Penny, in the mold of Raheem Mostert, um, you know, maybe yeah. trade him at his highest value. Value. I know. It's a tough one to, 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 to dabble because there's going to be a lot of people that might think that's controversial. But, you know, history repeats itself and it, it, it shall happen again, I'm telling you. Yeah. Okay, so we got a couple <laughs> injuries. Sorry. Uh, concussion. Uh, Traylon Berg still probably won't play this week. Damian Pierce finally back to practice. Uh, he should play this week. I am interested to see how that backfield shakes out now that Singletary has been playing really, really well. Typically what happens is when you have a guy who's a backup, he's a backup for a reason, and the starter is the starter for a reason, and even when the backup does well, the starter gets his job back when he comes back. So uh, I if if I have to start Damian Pierce... If I have both of them, I'm, I would start Damian Pierce over Singletary just because of the role. Um, okay. But at this point, with my Damian Pierce shares, he's got to prove something to me. He's got to prove that you know he can he can go back to to high volume because that was that's where his val- his value was before was he was getting twenty to twenty five carries and that was what was driving his his fantasy performance. So you got to you got to prove it to me again, DP. Prove it, prove it, prove it. I, I agree. I've, I mean, like we, we've talked about it on this show many times. Like we both got a lot of Damian Pierce shares that, you know, have gone down the drain and hopefully, uh, hopefully he can recover now that that offense is, you know, hitting on all cylinders and maybe he can get a piece of that pie that uh, single Terry has gobbled mm. up pie. Hey, I have pie downstairs. You do have pie downstairs. All right, Dudley, give me your studlies. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, I hit on Romeo Dobbs last week and James Cook, you know, no big whoop, no big whoop, no big whoop. Well, I hit on Devin Singletary last week. No big whoop, no big whoop. You gave me a couple good ones. Yeah. Uh, and I came through with. Uh, a Dudley call. I also told you to sit Adam Thielen, uh, who came back to life last week uh, against a tough Cowboys defense. He went eight for 74, a pretty good game. Uh, definitely not sit worthy. Um, a lot of those happened on that drive uh, that was penalty enforced. So it was after they took a, uh, a nasty penalty. So I'm not, I guess I am justifying my call there, but there was about three catches on that one drive that would have been annulled and a touchdown as well. So they, it might have not have been look, it might not have looked as good had that penalty not gone down. Dudley's uh, once again, I was a week early. Rico Dowdle, <laughs> I, yes. I called him and he gets the touchdown mm-hmm. this week. So I was literally four days too early, and uh, and I, I made a big ball call with. Uh, with CD lamb last week. And except for the touchdown, I was right on. And yeah. same with Jalen Warren, except for his little 74 yard scamper. Um, he got held down. So uh, process was right. Uh, but luck just kind of stepped in and went, <laughs> you're an idiot. It happens sometimes, right? Yeah. It happens to the best of us. Um, all right, let's get into our starts and sits. Who do you got? And we are the best of us, aren't we? Mm-hmm. I'm the best of me. All right. Uh, my first start is going to be Rashad Bateman. Uh, Chargers defense is the worst defense against the pass. We're, it's the best wide receiver matchup this week. Andrews is gone. Zabe may not play. OBJ has been limited. Lamar's got to throw the ball to somebody. That somebody is going to be Rashad Bateman. And also that somebody is going to be Keaton Mitchell. And also that somebody is going to be Gus Edwards and other people. So um, the, the choices are more limited than they have been traditionally for Lamar. And Rashad's been, you know, looking to break out. So I'm going to say this week is going to be it. All right. Yes, it'll be intriguing to see what happens there because there's a lot of injured players. So we'll see what happens. It'll look it'll look good if he does come through here. So my first start or yeah of the week here is Isaiah Pacheco versus your Raiders. Um, after a tough matchup against the best run defense in the league, Isaiah Pacheco and the fifth ranked run defense head into Las Vegas and face the 29th defense versus a run. They give up 135 yards per game on the ground. 
the Chiefs should be looking to run a lot in this game in order to control the clock and protect Mahomes against Max Crosby and that great Raider pass rush. The Chiefs will be leaning on Pacheco and the run game in order to win this divisional game on the road. We all know the Raiders like the Postal Service. They never deliver on Sundays. And we all know the Chiefs are like Amazon and they always deliver. So will Pacheco on Sunday. Um, I've seen the mailman on Sundays. Okay. I also saw the po- the Postal Service uh, a couple months ago in Berkeley and they were really, really good live. Um, 20th anniversary tour was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, um, I do want to remind you once again that um, Max Crosby is spelled with two X's. Two X's. Sorry. It's, 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 nope. it's... you know, Do- Dr. Depoy, put some respect on his mm-hmm. name. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I like Pacheco in this matchup, um, even though it kills me. Stabs a knife in my heart and twists it. Uh, we're not going to beat the Chiefs. We don't beat the Chiefs. I am, however... Grateful for our moral victory against the Dolphins. Um, I don't ever want to hear a Broncos fan tell me that they're better than the Raiders because every for till the end of time they'll get back. Yeah, but uh, Dolphins put a seventy spot on you guys, and we held them to twenty. So kick rocks. Yeah. All right. I, I, yeah, I, I think I think your Raiders played awesome against the Dolphins. A couple weird calls like that field goal before the half. I thought that was a little bit weird when they could have gone for a touchdown there. Um, but, you know, a couple random calls like that, that, you know, I guess they were conserving their young quarterback, which I understand. But, you know, he's a fourth rounder. Let's get him in there. Let's plug him yeah. away. And there were, I mean, obviously, rookie quarterback, there are some questions. Uh I don't know. I'm sure everybody has seen the Jalen Ramsey interception at the end of the game. But if you remove Jalen Ramsey from that equation, Aiden O'Connell threw an absolute dot to Tucker. I mean, if you freeze it where Ramsey catches that ball and you just watch the trajectory of the ball, it is right into the bread basket of Tucker. And it was, that was a gem. Uh, Unfortunately, Jalen Ramsey is a god and made a better play. So um, we don't need to talk about the Raiders anymore. Not for a couple weeks anyway. All right, my next set, or my next start. I'm going to start this one. Uh, my next start is Ramondre Stevenson of the New England Patriots. Uh, yeah. They're playing the New York Giants this week. The Giants defense allows 24 yards per game uh, rushing over the average, and that is one of the one of the best matchups for running backs this week. Uh, I see the Patriots defense getting Mac Jones, the ball quite often. And I see Ramondre and Zeke both. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to say start Ramondre. I, I like that. I mean, I, I also like a Zeke call there too, as like a kind of like a waiver wire pickup kind of situation. Uh, that ball. game is, yeah, that game is going to be so ugly. I don't I, it, it, it's going to be hard to watch, I bet. Uh, Bill Belichick, the next coach and GM of the Carolina Panthers. I just said it. Oh, I thought he was going to the Raiders and reunite with his own chance. Brady. Yeah, him and Brady. But if you think about it, uh, the owner of the Panthers, is he's a no-nonsense type of fella, and he's got a lot of money, and he's not going to want Frank Reich to stick around very long. So I think he's going to, he's going to give – Bill Belichick, a blank check. All right, then. You okay, heard so my... it here first. Right on, buddy. Okay, I want to, I'm okay, I'll, uh, I'm just writing this receipt up and then I'm going to cash it later on. We'll see what happens. All right. So my second start is Jerome Ford versus the Broncos. Another great game against the Steelers. Now Ford and the second-ranked run offense head into their juiciest matchup of the year when they face the 32nd-ranked defense versus the run, who give up an average of 158 yards per game on the ground in the Denver Broncos. This should be a smash game for Ford, where I expect him to be a top-10 running back this week, even with Kareem Hunt still heavily involved. Kareem Hunt is just sitting there in the shadows. But yeah, Ford Ford is a huge play um, in 
in that podcast I was talk, talking about, Jerome Ford was my big uh, end of the year target tra- trade deadline target. So I like the call. Right. Let's get into your sits then. Okay. Hey, yeah. You want to get into the sits? Let's do it. Let's get into the sits. You want some sits? Let's get sits. My first set is going to be DeAndre Hopkins. And I'm a little bit skittish saying that because of the last time I said that. Uh, uh, but Carolina is the worst wide receiver matchup of the week. Um, again, Will Levis is, I mean, he's kind of shaky and uh, he's a rookie. And, you know, Carolina's D is good. Uh, Derrick Henry might be able to to control the game a little bit. And uh, that's going to be another just gross, ugly, almost unwatchable game. But yeah, sit, yeah. Sit D-hop. yeah, I agree with that. I, I think that, you know, this is a huge Derrick Henry game, probably his best, one of his best matchups of the year. Um, and yeah, it should just be a pretty boring run type situation. Yeah, I agree with that one. Sit nice. D-hop. nice to have you on board, Mike. I'm always on board with you, buddy. Unless we're talking about Raiders and Chiefs. <laughs> All right. So my first sit is Cortland Sutton versus the Browns. Uh, Sutton has been a touchdown machine as of late. He has been a top 24 wide receiver all season because of this. The Broncos have been playing good football as of late, but unfortunately for them, they are playing the red hot Cleveland Browns who rank number one versus the pass, only giving up 150 yards per game. That Cleveland pass rush is ruthless and Russell Wilson will be under siege all day. I especially, Expect Sutton to not be super effective uh, unless he can get a touchdown, which is probably not super plausible seeing how they're playing the Browns. So I'm going to sit Cortland Sutton this week. Okay. That's a, that's a, a a risky move. Mm -hmm. It looks like Mike's the one that brought the big balls this week. I did. All right. Uh, My second sit is going to be Jonathan Taylor. I like the Colts this week against Tampa Bay, but Tampa Bay is the worst running back matchup of the week as far as defenses are concerned. And I think that they're going to hold Jonathan Taylor down pretty well. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, 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 yeah. that's all she wrote. I, I was doing, I was putting my notes together uh, right after I finished my Thanksgiving plate. And so I didn't write as much as, I mean, I did the analysis. I just didn't write it up because yeah, I, no, no, no. I had to get to the studio. Exactly. You, you had to perform. Uh, I don't mind that call. Uh, it is a big, bold call. Uh, maybe not as big, bold as this next one here. And uh, I think you got the popcorn ready for it, don't you? You've been waiting for this all week when I mentioned this, I bet. No. I don't uh, like it. I don't like it one bit. Okay. He, he's, I have him in one of my most important leagues that <laughs> I know. I really need him to like double up on everybody else's points in my Chuck Bass, Bass Bash five quarterback league. Well, if you're um, a gambling man, um, chances are it's going to go against me. So I'm just going to say, I we always have to start Patrick Mahomes, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure after last week. I'm not expecting a super high scoring game in this one. Both defenses are playing great, and the offenses are both sputtering along. It looks like Mahomes did a good job during the bye to find his rhythm. The receivers, on the other hand, not so much. I'm not expecting a huge fantasy performance from Mahomes in this one when he faces a tough Rud- Raider secondary and that ever dangerous pass rush led by double X Max P- Crosby. I would not be surprised if Mahomes finishes outside of the top 10 this week. I will start Josh Dobbs over him, Justin Fields, CJ Stroud, Trevor Lawrence, Kyler Murray. Um, I'll probably start right around, stop a right around Baker Mayfield. Uh, but, you know, Mahomes might be out of the top 10 this week because there's a lot of other quarterbacks I like better uh, in their matchups. And uh, I think they're going to be a little conservative this week and they're going to run the ball quite a bit. So uh, I think it's going to be another down week for Mahomes. 
unfortunately. All right, and you were on board with me, so I'm going to hop aboard with you. And that is the Big Boned Big Ball Call of the Week, oh. brought to you by Mike Grinberg. Way to go. I love it. Buddy. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. That's all you. All right. All right. Time for streams. Okay, again, I did the analysis. I just, mm -hmm. I didn't write much. So uh, here are my notes. Pittsburgh against Cincy. Do it. Steelers versus the Bengals. Do it. Wait, do we both? <laughs> we both had the same one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't see that. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, Jacksonville, <laughs> uh, because Mike beat me to the waiver wire and grabbed Pittsburgh's defense, and so I'm I'm, I'm playing Jacksonville. In, Indianapolis against Tampa Bay is another good one because Baker Mayfield um, really enjoys throwing the ball to defensive backs that aren't on his team. So. Um, He's been doing a better job of that. I think he really likes this Tampa Bay offensive system. But, uh, yeah, so I go Pittsburgh first, then Jacksonville, then Indy, if, you, uh, I got, if you're streaming defenses. I got, I got another one there that might be a shot in the dark. There's the Patriots versus the Giants. Uh, DeVito has been sacked, I think, 22 times in four games, and I think that could probably be exposed again here. So, I, I'd expect at least a couple sacks out of the Patriots in this one. So uh, an another one, low radar move there. What do you got for your streaming tight ends there, boss? I was just going to say, you are safe. I am safe. Shot, shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I hope, because he's not on waivers anymore, he's not going to be available for you to go grab and stream. Most so likely hope. he's not. Most likely he's not. Hey, oh, I hope that you got him on the waiver wire this week because I'm pretty sure he was the number one bid in just about every fab league that I'm in. Isaiah Likely. Again, we're talking about the Chargers pass defense. Again, we're talking about Lamar needing to put the ball in somebody's hands. Uh, likely has had really good fill-in games replacing Andrews and uh, – He's likely to have a good week this week. Mm, I like the odds of that one. Boom. I think it's cool that Isaiah Likely, who played for Coastal Carolina, had a receiver, and he kind of played a hybrid tight end wide receiver role, uh, but he had a teammate whose last name was Hiley. So sometimes you uh, can get him back to back or next to each other, and it was highly unlikely. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So my streaming tight end this week is David Njoku uh, versus the Broncos. He's been, <laughs> impre uh -huh. He's been impressive the last four games, no matter who is in at quarterback. Um, as the number two target in that offense, I am looking for the Browns to lean on their safety blanket in a tough matchup versus receivers. So hopefully uh, Njoku comes again. I'm expecting like a five to six catch game for him. Uh, probably around the 60 yard mark, potentially a touchdown if he can, you know, hit the pay dirt there. That was a good Njoku. <laughs> good one, Mike. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. So that's about it for this week. Uh, Short and sweet. Look at that. 35 um, minutes. Come on. I know. Well, we wanted to make sure everybody could get downstairs and eat their pie. And, you know, but it's Saturday when they're going to be watching this and they're going to be sitting there and they're going to be like craving 30 more minutes of our, um, fantastic banter. Well, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to make sure that we do it up next week just in case. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in. It's been another great week. Hopefully you guys have already, uh, gotten a head start on your matchups this week with the three games that happened today. And then, uh, the Friday match as well. So, uh, Looking forward to hearing all about it. Brandon, do you want to remind everybody where they can find you and all of your content? Heck yeah! I'm on Twitter at BigBonedFFB. It's right there. Uh, YouTube at BigBonedFFB. Check out my podcast, The Fantasy Burn. Uh, my last guest was Bo McBrayer. Bo yeah. underscore McBigTime, who seasoned most of my Thanksgiving dinner. Not 
personally. Um, but yeah, we had a had a really good conversation, and there is some talk, some chatter about Dynasty Pros Football creating an off season podcast in which I review whiskeys, Big Boned's Whiskey Minute, mm-hmm. and Bo McBrayer is known to have a fairly extensive bourbon collection and has accepted an invitation to come on board should the opportunity arise. And I talked to my local liquor distributor and they said that I could get bottles at cost. So that's a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but yes. there are wheels that have started turning and uh, and I'm really excited for that to be uh, some non-analysis content brought to you by the great folks here at DynastyProsFootball.com. Uh, also, uh, the Monday Meltdown live stream with special guests, which uh, was recorded this week, uh, but it got pulled because I screen shared some of the Monday Night Football game and YouTube was like, uh <laughs> Uh, <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Uh, so on that, you watch us live stream, react to the Monday Night Football game, give you the week in review shenanigans. Uh, Substack at Big Boned FFB. I haven't written in a few weeks, um, but yeah. And of course, DynastyProsFootball.com backslash author backslash Big Boned, and uh, that's where you can find my content. How about you, Mike? Do you want to remind everyone where they can find you and all of your content? Sure. I'm right down low here at FFCanuck99 on Twitter or X. All my written content uh, on DynastyProsFootball.com. I'm currently the Kansas City Chiefs creator for High Point Creator Network. And then I've joined yourself with Player player Profiler uh, covering the Chiefs and Broncos in the AFC West uh, with yourself. So, uh, thanks for that opportunity and yeah, man, we're rocking it. Yeah. Uh, I am going to go take a nap in a Turkey induced haze. Um, but not before I get some pie. You can have your pie and eat it too. Cause it's not cake. So enjoy it. That's true. But, um, we have, 25 30 or so minutes to to fill here um so i don't know if you've (laughs) there 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 was a a a young man from um the states and uh his he had a nickname and his nickname was the unabomber and one of the things that they picked up on in his some of his writings was he he properly used the phrase eat your cake and have it too because that's the way it's supposed to be said. Because if you eat it, it's gone. So you can't have it. If you have it, of course you can eat it. So have your cake and eat it too. Doesn't make any sense, but eat your cake and have it too. You can't do that. (laughs) All right. (coughs) On that note, excuse me, from the Fantasy Burns Studios here in Northern California and the Grindberg Studios in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, I want to say goodbye, everybody, and I hope you win. Have a great weekend, everyone.